Okay, uh, maybe I will switch to English, all right? Uh, so, hi everyone, it's good to be in my hometown uh, and tell you a little bit about what we are doing at HUGE and uh, uh, share a little bit like lessons learned uh, around one gaming category which we focused on, uh, on uh, nowadays. So, <coughs> I'm Mukash, I'm uh, now publishing manager, uh, so I'm responsible for looking at uh, very good games on the market that we can uh, publish and help you to grow. How many like uh, game developers are there here? Okay, cool. Uh, so we yeah, have so shortly about uh, huge games. Like we are one of the uh, free-to-play global market leaders. So the company was founded in 2014 uh, by Anton Gobel, who came uh, from Finland uh, to Poland and started as a studio. Uh, here, uh, huge was uh, at the beginning. We were like having uh, mostly uh, social casino uh, titles. Now we are switching more to casual games. So uh, uh, in 2018, the company generated 235 million dollars uh, revenue. Uh, there are all, uh, 500 employees, around 500 employees at huge and the uh, offices are spread around the world, so Hong Kong, Tel Aviv, uh, Berlin, uh, five offices in Poland, uh, San Francisco as well. <laughs> so before uh, Huge started uh, uh, um, social casino, doing social casino games, we had uh, like a previous company called Game Lion. Game Lion was mostly doing work for hire, but during that uh, age we also had some some of the games you can see here. So uh, spread it across uh, all genres. Uh, so all our like game developers in, in, in the huge team developed over 200 games uh, in total. Uh, so these were like casual games, midcore games, hardcore games. So so we know how to like um, do these kind of games across the, the whole categories. So, in 2018, we were focused on uh, uh, hyper-casual games, which are like simple games uh, with the one core mechanic. Uh, so, if you look at the screenshots, you uh, the screenshots you can um, you can uh, understand uh, how the game works, uh, and and that's uh, that's that's about it. So, sessions are very short, people are playing these games on the buses and so on. Uh, so, uh, so I will like, uh, on, the, on the next slides I will share uh, some insights about like if you want to start doing such kind of games, what you need to focus on. But before I do this, uh, there is like a very good report coming from Yuzu where you can see that the gaming uh, industry is like growing, so you can see the prediction that it's like growing very uh, rapidly and what is like interesting at this chart is that <coughs> the biggest like uh, uh, the biggest part of the revenue is mobile so uh, so it's not pc or console games but, but mobile is like uh, having the, the biggest impact so <coughs> free to play games these are games like monetized by ads and or or uh, you know, purchases uh, then if you look at how many people was the, was the audience overall, so it's like 2.5 billion people are playing these games, so each third person in the world is like uh, playing such kind of games. So if we go like uh, deeper, uh, you can, uh, free to play games can be divided in uh, categories. So there are hyper casual games, casual games, midcore and hardcore games. And each uh, genre uh, has like some specifics. So. If you want to uh, like kick off the studio, you need to like first think about what kind of uh, genre, what kind of game you would like to do, and adapt to uh, certain like specifics for uh, for this genre. So starting off like uh, hyper casual games, as I told you, these are very simple games. You can develop the game from one to two weeks. Uh, <clears throat> that was like the, the momentum which we had in our internal studio, uh, and it's like. Uh, Two months, it's 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 quite from two weeks to two months is quite okay. So you need to like produce fast, and uh, to, to have a success, you need to produce fast these kind of games and like hit the uh, high uh, amount of like uh, games you develop. 
Um, what is interesting is like CPI. Uh, this is like a very uh, important metric for us uh, and uh, for, for all of the guys doing games in the industry. It's like cost per install. To, so this is the amount uh, of uh, money you pay when you advertise your game on a, on a certain uh, ad networks on Facebook. So it's, it's a cost per user uh, that's, that you are bringing inside the game. So <clears throat> what is interesting about hyper-casual games, you saw that the gameplay is very easy. So people are treating these kind of games like entertainment than games. So the, they have very high organic traffic and the audience is very, uh, very broad. Um, going like um, uh, there, you have more <laughs> complicated uh, uh, games, so casual games, for example, which we are now focused on uh, mostly. Uh, so they have uh, a little bit higher CPIs. The, of course, the development time is like uh, also higher because besides like core mechanic, which is saw the screenshots in hyper casual games, you have like meta layer. There are additional uh, stuff that uh, that mm, that like improves your retention. Uh, and also, uh, these games are monetized by ads mostly. And uh, there, in casual games and all of the, the other ones, you can like have, uh, as, as Mario Mar told before, you can have uh, opportunities to monetize them by you know, purchases. So midcore, uh, also more complicated. You can see that the CPIs are uh, higher. Uh, it means that the uh, user acquisition campaigns which you will be doing uh, for these games, you, you need to target them specifically to a certain audience of players. And uh, that's why the, the CPI is like uh, higher, more targeting, uh, higher cost. So uh, first like uh, it started uh, like with this game, probably all of you know this game, it's Flappy Birds. Uh, that was like Hitmaker. So it created some sort of trend uh, in, uh, on the App Store, uh, and then like next uh, uh, next game uh, were created. So 2048 from Ketchup. Then like there was like Ketchup era. Uh, Ketchup is one of the publishers, and then like uh, Voodoo era, uh, where they uh, it's a uh, publisher from France who is like hitting a very big amount of downloads and daily active users. So if you look at like hyper casual genre leaders, uh, you can see uh, that two of them were like having the, the highest uh, highest volumes uh, of users and high, high, very high retention low CPIs. Uh, so these companies, uh, uh, so uh, the. Uh, there is like a trend on the market that uh, big players are like living in this genre. Uh, so, uh, so for example, Ketchup was uh, acquired by Ubisoft when I was estimating the acquisition like cost. Is, I, I calculated it was almost like two hundred million dollars. Uh, Voodoo was uh, had investment round from uh, from Goldman Sachs, two hundred million, and Brown Games was uh, developer. Uh, was like uh, acquired by Zynga. Uh, so, um, so yeah. If you look at the charts from 2000, uh, 2018, you can see that most of the uh, here you can see that you have countries and you have like top five games, and the the uh, light blue ones are hyper casual games. So, top of the charts were like dominated by this uh, this type of games. Uh, now I would like to walk you through some kind of process which we like developed inside our studio uh, and working with external developers. So first, like first step is how to ideate your next big hit, next big thing. So what our approach is like was very simple. We looked at the uh, what's going on in the market, where is the trend, what kind of mechanics <coughs> works or, or not. So we try to reverse engineer, uh, engineer the, the games which we like uh, found on the market. And then we try to like model them and, and improve them, add additional features, change something, or find next unique selling point inside the game. So uh, here's like the curve which, uh, bell curve, which like uh, uh, symbolize the, 
uh, how the trend is like uh, creating on an app store. So your goal as a developer, of course, is to do a very cool game, but you need to also think about hitting the top of the app stores to get as much money as to earn as much money as you uh, as you can. So the good moment to release a game is uh, if you look and, and track the, the, the trend on the market, it's like when the trend is like growing, where there are some, some of the apps which are like have specific mechanic uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the store and they are like uh, starting to creating a trend. The bad moment is like when the market is crowded, so uh, so many, uh, there is like, for example, you see on the top chart uh, one game with certain mechanics and there are a lot of copycats, clowns, so it's a bad moment to release uh, a game, similar game. Um, here is an example of like free games which uh, which were um, which were released in specific moments when the trend was created. So first, like introduction, so that the trend started to like be introduced. They don't earn a lot of money. Uh, the, the second one was like in the growth stage, so uh, they they earned like uh, million of dollars, uh, and the, like. <coughs> So also moment is also when the game is like in the saturation stage, you can also like uh, get some uh, some money out of it. Um, so how we like did this, uh, how we do our research, uh, it's like, it's both, it, it can work both for apps and also for games, so we are using certain tools to do this, so uh, first one is like data magic rocks, uh, you can use also sensor tower, uh, app and is uh, one of the, the best tools on the market. Uh, where you can like uh, uh, do your market research uh, and find your next big idea. So if you look at Data Magic Rocks, they have like this is a screen from pay plan, but in a free plan you don't have like number of downloads, but you have uh, this one. This is very interesting uh, thing. So uh, <coughs> we try to like uh, read it as a daily newspaper to see uh, what's going on in the market. So. Uh, here you can see that, the, for example, this app jumped from around 30,000 position on the store to 671. That means that somebody believed in this game and, uh, and does like paid user acquisition. Uh, and like if you observe this on a daily basis, you can see the changes and uh, you can see whether the trend is created or not. What, what is also important and cool about this software is like they are using their own taxonomy. So we can filter out like hyper casual match free games, which often you don't see such kind of categories on the store. Uh, and also you can like filter them out by geo. If you are trying to analyze the trend, look at the United States, uh, because uh, especially at the hyper casual genre, because uh, you have the uh, highest like CPMs in US, so you can uh, earn more money from that uh, than in other countries. So. Uh, going next, uh, App Annie, it's also like a tool for uh, showing you the top charts. Uh, I think that daily you can uh, view 500 positions. Uh, what is like good to know about this tool, it's like each app has some sort of rank history. So from this curve you can see <coughs> what kind of updates were done to the app or game. Uh, and you can see like uh, how, how it was jumping. So here, for example, there was probably some paid user acquisition, so the, the app go, uh, goes higher in the ranks, and then like was like sitting on some, some kind of place. So you can also see that another updates are bringing like nothing to the, to the growth uh, of the game. So developers should probably switch to the other game or, uh, or try to think about uh, some sort of other features. So after we do such kind of research, we try to document everything. So we look at the average uh, time of, uh, or length of the session, whether the game was online, offline, what was the core mechanic. This is important. What was the goal in the game? And what was the fail of the game? So you also, like, when you analyze the gameplay, so, so you see that the game has potential, you download it, you play it, and then you try to like capture the core mechanic, whether it's a match-free game or it's like snake game or something like this. And what is the goal uh, to finish the levels and what is the fail? And if there is like, you also can capture like whether there's additional depth, additional goal inside the game. How is the perfect made in the game? 
this type of uh, stuff uh, improve your retention. So it's like good to analyze the competition and get what, what works well. Uh, so <clears throat> this is like an uh, example of such kind of spreadsheet. So game name, publisher, gameplay, so core mechanic, graphics, uh, features, <coughs> monetization uh, also. Uh, and some like uh, tips which we which we saw. So this was one, like one of the experiments which we did. So there were a lot of games, uh, such kind of games on the market. Uh, and if we did a clone of this game, we have like high CPI. So CPI is connected to the visual part of the game. So you can imagine that you are scrolling, uh, let's say, Facebook feed, and you see like the ad. So you click that uh, when you like the, the visuals of the game. So that's why uh, that's why it's important. So we try to like twist the game, uh, find some some different uh, um, different cover, let's say visual. So we like took the mechanic. Uh, mechanic is responsible for attention, by the way. Uh, but we took the mechanic and we changed the visuals in order to lower the the, uh, the CPI. Uh, after that, uh, another approach which we did for like constructing the titles was like uh, taking one of the mechanics from one game and visuals from the other game and try to like combine them to, to create something new. Uh, other stuff you can do and play is like different angles. Uh, it can also like improve your CPI. Uh, here are like some of the mechanics which we identified and, and tried to like implement game, game space on this mechanic. Uh, and here is the like uh, process. Uh, so hyper casual is like all about the process. Process is super important. So uh, of, of your development. So you start with the prototype, then you are giving like the prototype to your colleagues. Uh, so we, we did some internal like tests. If you find it fun, uh, you finish the game only with core features. So only mechanic is needed. No other like shops or, or meta meta stuff. Uh, you, you don't like care about it at the beginning. And then you run a, 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 a test. So you are doing like a test paid user acquisition or Facebook or, or Google. Uh, and you look at the metrics. So you look at the CPI and the retention rates. It's good to like run such kind of tests on uh, for day one retention you need around 500 players and uh, you target the campaign uh, in US for example or UK uh, UK is quite similar uh, in terms of audience as, as US so uh, you run the campaign and you look what was the retention whether players were coming back or not uh, day one and day seven for hyper casuals. Uh, and what was the CPI? If the metrics are like horrible, uh, let's say one dollar CPI, you don't uh, develop the game because if you scale up, uh, so for example, you find publisher who gives you like budget for scaling the app, so growing the, the amount of users in that, uh, you will pay a lot. Uh, so specifics of this genre is like we need to lower the CPI so the cost will be. Uh, uh, lower than the, the, the revenue. Uh, so if you have good metrics, uh, uh, you are adding additional features to the game and, uh, and then you can run another uh, campaign or use A-B testing which Mariusz uh, told you about, uh, which we also did uh, using, uh, using Firebase. And then, and then you like uh, launch. So launch is like the moment when you acquire users across the, the, the whole world. If you, if the game is not uh, performing, you are killing it. So uh, you can do some additional updates to the game, but uh, if they like improve your retention, let's say for 10 percent, that's 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 good. If not, you are like killing the game because it doesn't make any sense to uh, to, um, to 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 launch it. So while working with like external developers, we saw like uh, some sort of process. So we were like prototyping games. They were prototyping games uh, within one or two weeks. Then we run the test. Test lasts from three days to four, 14 days. So if you want to, if you want to like start very simple, so try to do like uh, by 500 users in US. 
for uh, and, and try to run the campaign uh, in three days. So after three days, you will get like uh, day one retention. Let's say if you have retention like forty five percent on. Uh, Google uh, Google Play. That's like good uh, good sign that your game can be next like Felix Jump. Uh, and uh, and after that you can like continue the test to look at day seven. If they say day seven let's say is like 22 percent, uh, that you will have like uh, interesting game. So this kind of part is always good to like a publisher who can do this by uh, by you. But uh, uh, but now we we uh, we also ask the developers to try to run tests on their own. Like uh, it's it's also important. So when we are running a test, the developers creating another prototype this time. So after like three days. A publisher uh, or you can make a decision that my game will work with the market or not. If not, like kill the game and move to another title. It doesn't make any sense to develop it. So for the bigger titles, so we use like hyper casual development, uh, this kind of process as some, some sort of mindset of, of developing the games. So it's, it's, it's the same as Lean Loop from startup world. Like you are trying to develop something, then you put it on the, on the market, you try to measure it, and then make, make decisions based, uh, based on data. So for in game world, you like, <coughs> for the bigger titles, for example, uh, uh, casual ones, we try to like first uh, get the mechanics Think about mechanics, let's say we have, I don't know, spin the slot machine or like match free game. Then we are trying to test the visuals and, and the mechanic on the market uh, and we see that retention is good and CPI is good. So then we try to like, uh, on the next, next development stage that we see that the game, uh, the market like the game, we are adding additional like layers of the game. So. Uh, adding collectibles, stores inside the game, Yulia's, uh, and also at the end of the day, you are adding some like meta, uh, <coughs> meta layer to, to the game. So, so additional, some some additional stories of building a village based on like let's say uh, based on your match free uh, or results of your like match free session. So that's how we approach like development now. So this part is like good to use Firebase and A/B testing uh, to like check what works, for, what what's not. Remote config is like the super like uh, tool for, for doing such kind of experiments. Also, so profitability uh, takeaway. So <coughs> hyper casual gives you like low production costs because type of development is low. Uh, if you want to have like success in this genre, you need to like develop games fast and iterate fast and decide fast. And of course, you need to remember that costs should be lower than revenue, so you need to lower the CPI as much as possible. Uh, other like metrics you care about, so retention. I told you percent uh, percentage of uh, daily active user watching video ads. Uh, it will help you like identify whether your ad implementation is okay or not. Uh, ads per watcher is important. The more ads uh, the uh, the players see, the the, the, the bigger revenue will have. Of course, you don't. Uh, your goal is not to like put uh, such amount of ads to like uh, to, to kill the user. So here you can see that I, I took it from from game analytics for some one of the title which we are like uh, uh, testing. So. Here we can see retention, cohorted retention uh, for, for each day. Uh, and sometimes you see that there is a drop, like, uh, like, like let's say here. Right, so, so what game analytics can help you out with is like, first thing you, you look what was the, uh, uh, what was the uh, level progression. That's super important in hyper casual games that you balance the difficulty level in some uh, in some way, so you can see that, for example, going from uh, this level to this level, you see a drop. That means that probably level two is like too complicated, or the goal is not uh, clear for the user, or controls are bad. Uh, so you can see that there is a drop, which impacts uh, your, uh, of course, your retention. 
Um, so uh, what, uh, what I wanted to mention as well, like we are working closely with Google, so Mariusz mentioned Gamecamp, if you're invited, uh, you can always uh, also find us uh, on the event and people who are doing, for example, user acquisition analytics, uh, creatives at our team. Uh, we also had uh, academy, uh, a free U2O Academy for uh, young developers. Uh, the goal was like they developed the games and we also learned them how to monetize and, and acquire users to these games. And also Google for Startups where, where we also like, uh, were one of the advisors. Uh, so huge launch, several uh, growth opportunities for studios. So if you have a Nowadays, casual games because it's like our focus now. Uh, we can like do three three things together. So we can publish the game uh, and help you out with uh, acquiring users and also improve the monetization of the game. Um, and now, now back and give you some insights about the audience and so on. We also invest. Uh, so we launch the uh, the funds. Uh, we will invest in growth. So you, for example, your game is on the market. You have decent like uh, KPIs for the game, and then we can help you out with like growing. So uh, acquiring more more users. And also another thing which we do is uh, M and A. Uh, so merges and acquisitions. So we also buy companies. Uh, uh, by uh, by studios and uh, or partner with other studios. So that's it. Uh, if you want to reach me out, uh, just send me an email and, and we can talk. Thanks. Questions, please. Dziękuję bardzo.